I, I read the Torah every day, yes. right? And yet, sometimes I sin, right? Sometimes uh, the, tempta- we're not about the, the, the temptation, respect, the temptation is too great. Now, nowadays, we don't understand the temptation to idolatry that they faced in those days because those were very spiritually, it was a very spiritual time. I, in those days, people had an innate desire to just, worship idols. But just what you're saying, with respect, it doesn't follow. But I'll tell you why. The people that you're talking about, the forefathers of the king, who King Josiah. Uh, have been given revelation that teaches them to be monotheist that they su- should have been following for generations and generations you're saying that despite knowing that God is one that God is not the creation that they had a temptation for idolatry yes absolutely that's exactly what I'm saying all of this information that you provided about how what the punishment for the people will be for abandoning the worship of the one God that has been happening for, for generations already before King Josiah. He's already aware of this. And yes. this, this further emphasizes the point that if he was already aware of this, as soon as the, um, he, ha- he had the position of power, the first thing he would do is, let's bring these people back to monotheism. Now, that, now what, you're, what you're asking us to accept is, he didn't do that. And it was only when he found the words of the Torah in this Torah that was found, and they were read to him, that he suddenly had a realization that actually I need to act on these words and be worried by this warning. Now, that narrative is not consistent. Be honest, what's the, in, what's the initial reaction to hearing that? The initial reaction will be, here is something that's been found that this person was not aware of. Now suddenly <clears throat> he's, it's confirmed He's shocked that the forefathers haven't abided by these teachings and he tears his clothes out of frustration and anger and, up, and upset and shock. W- would you say that's a more reasonable conclusion or, or, or would you say the more reasonable conclusion is that he was already aware of these teachings, he was already aware that this was part of the Torah, but this was just a reminder to him and it was because of the reminder that he got so upset and angry about it. What would be more reasonable? Do you you answer that? The, first. The, this, this, this is not um, this is not one of those legal scenarios where we say what will the what will the average Joe Bloggs in the street say? What will the no. what will the uninformed I'm saying users is, say? I'm no. saying what is more reasonable reading the text for what it says. Well, that's not how we deal with Tanakh. The way we deal with Tanakh is the way that Mephoshim have explained it to me. Right? If the right there is a tradition that goes behind interpreting that, and these I things, that, and, I and the and the words that are used are very important Josh, I because that. the words that you used that I was trying to pick up on before harken back to words that were said in the end of Leviticus. Josh, I said somebody a without a dog in the race. Yes, but so those not, people, not a Jew or a Christian. No, those on, people, on face value, if you read those words, but would you? Walk, would you? I don't walk, care what they would think. It you, it's not relevant. I'm saying what do you think saying, is more reasonable? But, um, it doesn't matter what's more reasonable. Because context... It doesn't matter. Because context... What, what were the remedial actions that were taken by the king after he found out this out and the people weren't following it? Trying to, t- trying to get a, uh, a, an even greater focus on repentance than he had been doing before. It's in the next chapter. Yeah. So he says... So the, this in, is what... So, it's the best you can say <clears throat> is an epiphany yeah. rather than being so shocked. Because the, 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 yeah. the claim you're making is yeah, that the king was aware... The king was aware... Because the claim this is what you're making, Josh. You're saying the king was already aware of this. Yes. He was, and, the, the, and, the, and the many generations of the people were already... Um, doing these things, which, have, which we'll see what the remedy of them is in... in okay, let's, so let's go for the next chapter. And then, what it says. And when this... And so they were already doing this for generations. It says that the, the people that have gone before, yeah, they, the, the, yeah, they have been. So, so followed, more than one generation right? so, were. Yeah, two generations. I'm just, right? I'm just trying to so make, let me make the case there. So a Torah is found yes. when they're repairing the temple. The priest reads a section of the Torah and the, and the king rents his clothes. And he talks about that the generations that have gone before, so more than a generation is approximately 40 years. And he's talking about more than one, but the generations that have gone before have not abided by the with the book. Okay, fine. Okay, so now, so that the two so, couple so, of things. So, so let's talk specifics. Now. No, I am going to talk specifics. So, yeah. So when you go to the next chapter, you see some of the remedial actions that were taken. Chapter twenty-three. So they destroyed altars, they smashed idols, the homes of the of the of the sodomites were cleared, and the priests were killed. Yes. Now, so this is the, these are the things that were happening yes. that 
were, that were, had gone on for generations that you said that the king was aware of, yes. but only became moved, you know, amazed and moved after to... finding. So there were altars to other 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 other, other deities that, that were that were destroyed. Yes. Yeah. There were idols that were smashed, and you have to understand these altars had been there for many years. The idols had been there for many many years. The, the homes or the housings of the sodomites just were cleared. I don't. I, I'm not. I'm not arguing with you on these points. Absolutely, but, what, and, but, but because, this, because we know. Because look, when you read this book, right, you should have read from before Josiah, right. You should have read all the way from the beginning, right. But it's a long book. Now, before Josiah, who was the king? The king was King Omer, and we're told that he was somebody who was an idolater. And during his time, there was a lot of idol worship. Right? Now, he didn't rule for very long. He ruled for, was it uh, six years or seven years? I can't remember. Um, and the king, or five years, the king before him was King Manasseh, who had a very long reign. So, 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 sorry, Joshua. Years. So, you're missing and the point a bit, Joshua. Yeah, this but, but, is very important. Sure. Because what's, what's the name of the king? What's the name of the king? King Manasseh. <laughs> right now, it's King Yoshio. No, no. Before him was King Omon. Omon. Before him was King Manasseh. Right? And Omon, Omon ruled for six or seven years. Something like that. And he introduced idolatry. So he didn't. He introduced it. He continued it from his father. So he continued like his idolatry. Father was Manasseh. He continued idolatry. Yes, he did idolatry. So, 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 hold on. so, 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 presumably, after presumably, his time where there was no idolatry. Because the Torah, the Torah, obviously, completely uh, refutes idolatry on, on in yes. every way explicitly. Yes. 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 So, despite having the Torah, you're yes. saying yes. Despite having the explicit teachings of the Torah that idolatry is haram, forbidden. Yes. He still had these idols and he still had these things and the people were still following those things. A lot of people were because this is what so the... So did they not read the Torah the showing them that this is completely forbidden and that they should not be following this? Look, I, I read the Torah every day, yes. right? And yet sometimes I sin, right? Sometimes no, the, tempta the, 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 temptation, the temptation is too great. Now nowadays we don't understand the temptation to idolatry that they faced in those days because those were very spiritually those were very spiritual times so sure, and people second, understood yeah, the sorry, power Josh, of idolatry Josh, what do you mean and it was by a huge sorry, temptation Josh, what, what do you mean by the temptation of idolatry? so nowadays we have no idea the temptation that that, 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 was, that no the temptation no, it's, what, not, what, it's not about consequences right, look, look, you're you, talking you, about you've got, you got a statue here you've got a statue here right have you got any temptation to bow down to it no as a, uh, right as an agnostic as an atheist no. as a, you've got no temptation if you're Hindu the only reason you're doing it is because you believe that it's your religion but you've got no temptation you've got no desire innate in you right in those days people had an innate desire it's to just, worship idols no, Josh, what you're saying with respect it doesn't follow but I'll tell you why the people that you're talking about, the forefathers of the king, who King Josiah, are have been given revelation that teaches them to be monotheists. That they should have been following for generations and generations. You're saying that despite knowing that God is one, that God is not the creation, that they had a temptation for idolatry. Yes, absolutely. That's exactly what I'm saying. And rather than worship the one God, they would rather. But you bow down to you idols to, and sacrifice of, on the altars. You have altars. to realise that King Ahab was married to Jezebel. And no, that's not the point. That's not the point though. That's yeah, I know. Ahab's but from the northern so kingdom. Even if, God by even if, yeah, all, I even if, they were even exiled to Assyria. Yeah, so, I know. The, I know so let me what? give a counter example. If there's one man who knows monotheism, Tawheed, let's say, monotheism. Right, I have a homo venus. Yeah, right, okay. Him. Monotheism completely. Yeah. You could, I would say you could put him in the sea of idol, idol worship that he would, they would never resort to that because they they know nowadays that. definitely but in even, those even days then. it was far far harder people had a real strong inclination to you know just idolatry. this is the opposite to islam then I, I, I because disagree. the further back you go in islam the less inclination and the less uh you know uh, uh, uh to go towards idolatry because as you get closer to the source of prophet muhammad peace be upon him and in fact this is what prophet muhammad peace be upon him said that Many things will inflict the Muslim Ummah, but one thing that will never happen is idolatry, that the people will turn back to idol worship. What now, was the what, of the Torah? Now, no, no, but going back to your point, because the subsequent chapter, what were the re re remedies that were done by the king? Alt who, altars were destroyed, Aldis were smashed, the housings of the, of the Sodomites were cleared, right. priests were killed. Right. Now, right. Now, 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 all of these things that have been happening for many generations, now, the, the thought then comes to mind, if you're saying that 
despite having the Torah that people had a propensity to still Id worship idols, despite knowing the God is one. Yes. No, what, it's worse what, than what that. The, because the king himself, apparently according to Josh, was a fully aware of those teachings. Yet he didn't destroy the altars or the idols or anything else. But guess what, Josh? When that scroll is found and he's reminded of something that was lost, suddenly he is driven to action and he destroys the altars and he stops the idolatry and okay. he clears the houses of the no, Sodomites. No, no, now the point here is this, Josh, yes? When we look at the context of that and we look at his actions after finding the scrolls, it does not imply that he was aware of these scrolls, he was aware of that Torah and that he simply chose not to follow it. But what it does seem to show is that he's suddenly now bring aware, brought aware of something that was lost and immediately takes action to remedy. Can I, can I give you the reason can, for can what? I, yeah. can I? Because there's been something I've been, I've been attempting to... Okay. Let, him run, just finish that, let him run just finish that point and then you can come in. If, the, if, it was, if, it was a, if it was a thing that the, the Josiah didn't have power before he became king exactly. to make the changes, then what you would expect is that as soon as he had the power, he would make the exactly, changes. Exactly, exactly. But what you find is, because obviously, because your claim is the awareness was already there of the wrongs that were going on for many generations. Now, if if the, what we see in the narrative is that after the becoming king and having the temple <laughs> repaired, the Torah is found, then the realization comes and the changes are made. So it, it, the, the narrative you're presenting doesn't fit with the story that we understand. But you could. So can I bring something to your attention? Can right? Maybe. In Leviticus chapter 26, we have what's called the Tochacha, which is the rebuke. Um, and this is, according to our tradition, the, the, um, the words that were read to King Josiah. And you're going to see why it would then make sense for him to be so, to, to be so, um, be so distressed what, by having address? these read to him. Um, from verse 27. And if you will not for all this hearken to me, but walk contrary to me, then I will walk contrary to you also in fury. And I will chastise you seven times for your sins. And you shall eat the flesh of your sons, and the flesh of your daughters shall you eat. And I will destroy your high places, and cut down your images, and cast your carcasses upon the carcasses of your idols, and my soul shall abhor you. And I will make your cities waste, and bring your sanctuaries to desolation. And I will not smell the savour of your sweet odours. And I will bring the land into desolation, and your enemies who dwell in it shall be astonished at it. And I will scatter you among the heathen, and I will draw out a sword after you, and your land shall be desolate and your cities waste. Then shall the land enjoy her Sabbaths as long as it lies desolate, and you are in your enemy's land, then all the land rest and enjoy her Sabbaths. As long as it lies desolate, it shall rest, because it did not rest in your Sabbaths when, I, when you dwelt upon it. And upon those who are left alive of you, I will send a fakeness into their hearts, into the lands of their enemies, and the sound of a shaken leaf shall chase them, and they shall flee, as fleeing from a sword, as the, and they shall fall, from, fall when none pursues. And they shall fall upon one another, as if it were before a sword, when none pursues. And you shall have no power to stand before your enemies. And you shall perish among the heathen, and the land of your enemies shall eat you up. And they that are left of you shall pine away in their iniquity in your enemies' lands, and also in the iniquities of their fathers shall they pine away with them. And they shall confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers with their trespass which they trespassed against me, and that also they have walked contrary to me, and that I also walked contrary to them, and brought them into the land of their enemies. Then only will their uncircumcised hearts be humbled, and then they will make amends for their sin. Then I will remember my covenant with Yaakov, and also my covenant with Yitzchak, and also my covenant with Avraham, but I remember, and I shall, and I will remember the land. The land also shall be forsaken by them, and shall enjoy her Sabbaths while she lies desolate without them, and they shall make amends for their iniquity, because even because they despised my judgments, and because their soul abhorred my statutes, and yet for all that, when they are in the land of their enemies, I will not cast them away, nor will I abhor them to destroy them utterly, and to break my covenant with them, for I am the Lord their God. But I will, for their sakes, remember the covenant of their ancestors, whom I brought out of the land of Egypt in the sight of the nations, that I might be their God, I am the Lord. These are the statutes and the judgments and the Torahs, which the Lord made between him and the children of Israel in Mount Sinai by the hand of Moshe. So, if you were the king, and the words of a scroll that has just been found are read to you, and it happens to be that the very words that you're being taught of, being told of, is about the punishments for the sins of the nation and about how awful it's going to be if you don't listen. 
right? If those are the words that, gonna, that, that, that you hear, you are going to be spurred into action. But it's a problem, Josh. And the problem is, he already knows these words. Just that, hearing the this words is, this is, is not... It, no, no, you no. Have, I have my point. All of this information that you provided about how, what the punishment for the people will be for abandoning the worship of the one God, that has been happening for, for generations already before King Josiah. Two. Two, at least let's say at least two, because it says our forefathers for the generations, well, minimum two. Well, we know okay. based on the, no the timeline in the text, it's two. He's already aware of this. And yes. this, this further emphasizes the point that if he was already aware of this, as soon as the um, he, ha he had the position of power, the first thing he would do is, let's bring these people back to monotheism. Now, that, now what, you're, what you're asking us to accept is, he didn't do that. And it was only when he found the words of the Torah in this Torah that was found, and they were read to him, that he suddenly had a realization that actually I need to act on these words and be worried by this warning. Now, that narrative is not consistent. And sometimes and, 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 I'll, let you come, I'll, I'll let you come in, Josh. I, I will let you come in as well, brother. The, the, What's the, the name, by the way? Quaku. What is it? Quaku. 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 Abbas, Imran, Josh. If it had been something like the Sabbath starts an hour earlier or an hour later and he knew it but he didn't implement it, you could say, okay, you know what, it was a trivial matter. But once he got the scripture, he decided to take action. This was the greatest sin, according to Moshe, Musa alayhi salam, and Ibrahim alayhi salam, okay? And all of the prophets, Nuh alayhi salam, Noah, all of the prophets, the greatest sin, was idolatry. The biggest downfall is idolatry. And you're saying he knew this and he took no action for it until he found the scroll before he took action. And because it's, sometimes because all it takes, sometimes what you really need in order to get yourself into, into translating what you know in your mind to be, to be the right thing to do into the actions of your hands is a moment of inspiration. And this was for King Josiah, his moment of inspiration. When he, when these words were read to him, right, in a very auspicious moment when he was cleaning out the table, getting the temple funds ready, right, and the scribe comes and says, oh, we found this, we found this scroll, right, and, um, and I'm going to read you the words that I found in it, right, and he reads him these words, and, and he hears, oh, this is, this is a sign. I need to get into action. Okay, now. so let's follow I your. Let's follow. Let's now. follow your. Let's follow what you're you saying. What does Quaker want to say? Yeah, just, go on. Just, just one quick thing. In terms of being aware, right? You have to remember that King Solomon was also aware that idol worship wasn't allowed, but yet he lasted after many idols. That's a fact in the Bible. And not only that, you're saying that he was. This is completely off. But there's another commandment where King David he knew idolatry. I mean, adultery was wrong. But yet he took another man's wife and had that man murdered. And the moment the prophet came to him and said that he was going to lose his child, what did he do? He took off his clothes, put on sackcloth and ashes, and then he fasted and prayed. But the kid still died. But yet he was still so, aware. So this is where the Quran differs from the the, the, the Bible. Yeah, but he was so, still aware. So, so where 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 prophets are described to have incest with their daughters. Or, or, or prophets, you know, do things that are so immoral, in fact, that Josh or I or you or whatever would never even consider. The Quran refutes these things. The Quran says these things would never happen. But the most important thing... I mean, it disagrees with them, not refutes No, it refutes... The, 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 the most important thing... It's a reputation. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a reputation from our paradigm right. because obviously we believe that the Quran is from, from a divine source, oh, from right. God Almighty, right? Obviously, from your paradigm, it might not be. Right. But the point is that... So the Bible says many things about the prophets, including about, as I said, incest with their own daughters. Well, of course, it doesn't mention the or their, of the prophets. Or their daughters, you know, seducing their own father, getting him drunk. Lot so that, so, 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 so the Quran, the Quran, from our perspective, it, it it clears all of the prophets of anything like this, because if the prophets are the best of example to humanity, then they cannot mm. conduct acts that would be so demeaning to you or to me, okay? Because you have to understand you, the narrative. Well, yeah, you're still a human, yeah. but would you do that to your daughter? Well, 
That's a long time ago. We live in different no. times. My brother, my, my brother, <laughs> my brother, my brother. Like you, he's already said, we live in different my, my brother. Talking, when it comes to loans, we're talking about a specific situation. Yeah, we're where talking about a situation where, left in the where his daughters thought there was nobody else in the world. This is, yeah. this is sort of and they thought that they had a duty my, to repopulate the world. I'm just simply giving you an example about... Yeah, we understand uh, your uh, point. About, about, about morality, about teachings, and about what the Bible we'll find in the Bible. The, the, more fundamental but the point, fundamental point that Imran's making the, is... The, the, the fundamental point is that if you had revelation to from God to you, to you. directly, yeah. you know that God is one. Yes. You know that my, I have to worship this God and obey that God, right? Yeah. There's no doubt. You don't need you. a reminder. As a, as a prophet. So no. To, to I, I, David, you, for example. You don't need to be reminded of that. I think, he would, I so him, him, my point before you yeah, answer my point. He, he would, David Pichipone would understand that this is my Lord and yeah. this is the command that I've yeah. been given. This is, yeah. To then say that this, despite this, and this is more of an, this is more of a conviction than you or I in terms of, we do not have this direct connection. No, no. That, that despite this, that they will still end up worshiping idols. Disobedience. This is not first disobedience. Class. This is no, no. First class disobedience. So this is, no, this is not. So now this is a, See, a and you're putting that upon someone who's had direct revelation from God. Now the narrative, that's, the narrative doesn't yeah. make sense. And what, what the objection is, this is what the objection that Vart is making is, yeah. That, you, that these things are purported to the people who would be the greatest role models within your society. And not only that, but they were sent by God to humanity as a guide and a connection to the Almighty. And, the, and those people, the very people sent by God, you're, you're telling me committed incest, and they no, they fell they fell into they fell they fell into idolatry. The very people that Allah purified and strengthened and gave them miracles and, and spoke to them directly. Con con they were in contact with the Almighty. They saw the miracles of the Almighty. Maybe they had the angel Gabriel visiting them, whatever it might be. Yeah. And you're saying that those people who are supposed to be our example, people who we learn from, <clears throat> fall into sins that you or I would never hopefully fall into. No, I'm not saying that, he's saying that. Sure. And the Jewish position about David and Solomon's um, sins in the Bible is that the Bible deliberately exaggerates it to show that what it was that they actually did, which is not so what So the Bible exaggerates something that they didn't do. So, what the, so, so, so the, the way we see it, the Talmud it says this, that um, whoever says that David sinned in doing like, in, 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 that, in that he actually did adultery, not what he did was actually adultery, is is making a mistake, is, is misunderstanding. Whoever says that Solomon actually did worship idols is making a mistake, right? So, so, so how do, so they how didn't do we understand worship that? We, we agree with so, 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 the, so the way that we understand it is um, with regards to David is that um, is that. The, the way it was done in those days when men went to war is that they would give divorce documents to their wives, which when they would come back would, would, become, would become nullified again. And so whilst Uriah went to the battlefield, Bathsheba was not a man's wife. She was a single lady. She was a divorced woman. And so what he did was not actually adultery. In terms of the murder of the, uh, of the man, um, so because he, so so sorry, please explain that to me. So anyway, we're, we're, move, we're, we're, we're moving off the topic. Well, so the child let, let's, let, let's, let's let's get back and, to the topic. And, and, and the, uh, yes, because let, because, let, because what he did wrong Josh, was that he was tried wrong. to was he, he tried to cover it up. Let, exactly. let, let, let's right, let's get let, let's yeah. get back and to the regards to Solomon just very let, quickly because I, I, yeah. this is important. And with regards to Solomon, um, it's, it, as he said correctly, he lusted after Many women, uh, uh, idols. idols. So what, what happened there was, was that he, he married a lot of different women. Have you read women, Maghrib? And, right, the, the, and, and, and Deuteronomy okay. says that you're not, a king is not allowed to have um, too many wives. And he he, he he was a very very wise man, King Solomon. And he thought, well, the, the, the reason for that is because they will lead you astray. But I will, but, but I'm so wise. I'm not going to be led astray, um, and so I'm able to deal with more wives. But it turns out that he was wrong, and um, and his and although he himself did not worship idols, his wives did bring idolatrous ways into the home, and he didn't put his foot down. And therefore, he so he allowed his wives to be to no, idolatry. Okay, just, let's just let's get let's get back to the. I just want you to. I just want to. 
But that, that's, that's, that's literally an example Thank you, brother. of kings being aware of the law yeah. and yet being disobedient. So, so, I, so I would say, so when if the text is say, true, guys, we're, we're talking well, about yeah. Please, go ahead. So what I would say that that doesn't make sense on, on a on a experiential basis of knowing God in the sense that God has revealed something directly to you and then going about disobeying Him despite being a prophet. But that's the, a, this is the, a side point. Side point. If we, if we come back, if we come back to if we come back to the the passage itself, after the the, the the, the king Josiah he hears the words in Second Kings 22 what does he do that immediately can you check for me yeah so 11, verse 11 I was in Vertica so I need to go back again the Lord is discussing God created at home and everybody want to push their religion is the first and the last and that is wrong sister if you love each other yes. you want good for one another that's right. And if your brother is doing something wrong, you would advise him respectfully. Exactly. This is all from love. Is this from, love? from I love? I love. I love Josh. Yeah. Every time I ask Josh, verse, when I see verse, Josh verse, anywhere verse in the park, I go up to Josh verse, to, to verse, greet him. Verse eleven. Yeah. 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 So it's out but of it, 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 no, no. We're not doing that. that about but my religion, no. Regardless of religion, whether they're prophets or not, you still have to I, I bear in mind that. You are Muslim. Alhamdulillah. Yes. I know your Quran very well Hamdula. inside that. Good, good. Okay? But I am Jewish as well. Good. Okay. Good for you. But I found Shalom. your Quran yes. come after our uh, thing. Yes. After Jesus. And it's photocopy yeah. from our Torah. Yeah. I could give you yes. a lot so of parts from yes. the Quran. Yes. And he it's said, because, in your Quran, yeah. yes. in your Quran said, I don't know if you understand Arabic or speak Arabic because I do. Okay, very good. Sure. Yeah. Crea God created us all different nations to get along with That's each other. That's correct. Not, okay. to, not to persecute so, each other. So nobody. Inna afdalukum inda Allahi atkakum. What does that mean? The one who is best, the one who does the right thing. Yes. No, no matter whether you're Muslim, Jewish, Christian, even atheist. If you do the right thing... We, we yes. disagree, sister, on this yeah, respectfully. Don't forget the Ten Commandments, yes. what God has but given sister, to the Jewish you're people. doing exactly the same thing to me that we're actually discussing with exactly. Josh. Out of love, you're trying to correct me. I'm and, not and, correcting and, No, no, but you said to me that... You, you said to me that this is how it should be understood, yes. which is different from how I understand it. So Why therefore, different? I understand. Well, because I don't understand it in the way you're explaining it. Well, I, 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 to me. I, we, 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 we will do each other. No, no, but that's exactly I'm, what we're I'm doing here with Brother Josh. But please, uh, yeah, we're, we're, yeah, missing the point. we're gonna just get well, back to the point. I'm saying, As a, when, when you are looking <laughs> at the religion, yes. looking at the, the Ten Commandments, what yes. God has given, yes. It's not only the basic of all religion, except just others, for the Jewish people. Jewish yes. People. Yes. But to respect your parents, of course. not to steal. Of course. Not to of course. And on top of that, yes. is the constitution yes. to all the country. No country tell you you're okay to steal. You're okay. So that means what God has given to the Jewish people is the basic, and the rest they want to follow according to their understanding is up to them that's why we don't we're not evangelists we don't go Do and say you got to follow us just separate you muslim sister muslim sister they force Sist you. sister okay La well let's go have a dean sister no no okay, you know they force you. okay. They <laughs> sister i know that uh, you know this La i know that, that history of islam okay. La La. inside out okay. i learned it sister from yes, let, 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 yeah, let, 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 let 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 them no. finish their so conversation the please I like, know, I don't, don't I get know, sucked into that. I understand, yes, but but this is important. Just, just, just one quick point before we carry on is that you have to remember that from Abraham all the way to the Messiah, which I believe in, Jesus Christ. We believe Lord, in the Messiah Lord, as well. Lord, it's in the Lord. Lord. My, my Lord, you have to remember that every single one of them were flawed human beings. I I with according you, to you. I disagree with you, brother. That's the thing. This is the point. We, this, this point is irrelevant because what you're saying is that the greatest people that God chose, we who, got who, God, who God the guided, worst, did the worst who, who God guided the people and purified, and did the worst. Make sense. It doesn't make sense. But let's let's get let's back to this point, brother. So when you when, are soon, sit one second. Sir, let's let's, be, let's be, yes, yes, we understand. Sister, sister. Let, let's respect each other. Let's let them finish their point. 
So where Josh is asking you where you're from. He's a nice guy. He's another. He's, he's another nice Jewish guy. brother. I, like I know. I know. I'm Jewish. So yes. Happy is that yes. Yes. At Morakai. Morakai. I said, I know you are Jewish because the way you dressed. I am Jewish, but I like this conversation. But it is okay to discuss, but not to prove I am best, you are best. No, but you just tried, best. you were just explaining to me something. Yeah, this is what we're doing best. to one another. Who is kind to Isacha? Yes. He didn't say whether Jewish, Christian, or the, Okay, right sister, thing. Imran, please Emma. make your point. Emma. Guys, we need to pray. Yes, yeah. yeah. so right. you've got about an hour. You have about 45 minutes. Oh, no. okay. 40 minutes. So let's just finish the discussion. But let's just get this. It's waste of time. You have, even in their Quran, I know it inside out, they say you got to, uh, God created all the world. Yes, but that doesn't mean that all religion. Is, yeah, yeah. But you're, in, you're, you're interpreting my Quran. <laughs> Not interpreting. Yeah, of course you are. Imagine if, 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 imagine if somebody I'm interpreted quoting. somebody else's Quran. No, no, that's fine. You can <laughs> do that. I'm not interpreting. But, but, yeah. okay. I'm quoting. Okay, but sister, you're not even saying what we're doing right now. Sister, you're not even letting me speak. Yes. <laughs> Imran, that, please that make your point. point. Okay, okay. So, the, so what a, well, the question I was going to ask you, which is more relevant to this uh, discussion that we were having was, what happens after the king hears the words of the book of the law? Well, as we read earlier, uh, so, we read it again. So, so no, no, this is, this is different. So I want to know what action the king took. Yeah. So it came to pass when the king had heard the words of the book of the Torah, that he rent his clothes. That's the first thing he does. Yeah. And the king commanded Hilkiah the priest, and Achikam the son of Shaphon, and Achbar the son of Pichaya, and Shaphon the scribe, and Asoya the king's servant, saying, Go inquire of the Lord for me, and for the people, and for all Yehuda, concerning the words of this book that is found. For great is the wrath of the Lord that is killed against us, because our we fathers have not hearkened to the words of this book, to, to do according to all that which is written concerning us. Okay, That's the second continue. thing he does. So, he, he sends somebody, Go and inquire of the Lord for me, for the people, and for all of Judah, about what is written in this in this book that has been found. Yes. So he's asking to, uh, for I would say verification. But let's move on to what. So these people, where they go to speak to who in verse fourteen? Right. So Hilkiahu the priest and Achikam, uh, uh, Achba and Shaphan and Asoya went to Chulda the prophetess, the wife of Shalom, the son of Tivka, the son of Harchas, keeper of the wardrobe. Okay. Now she dwells in Yerushalayim in the second quarter. And they spoke with her. So they, because so what it means so to they, what inquire they, of God means to go speak to a prophet. So, or so, the, so the king heard these words and he said, Go to, go to the prophet. prophetess yeah. and inquire about these words. So then yeah. we hear about what, what, what does she do then? What did she say? And she said to them, Thus says the Lord God of Yisrael, Tell the man that sent you to me, thus says the Lord, Behold, I will bring evil upon this place and upon its inhabitants, even all the words of the book which the king of Yehuda has read i.e. what I mentioned before, the rebuke. Because they have forsaken me and have burned incense to other gods, that they might provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands, therefore my wrath shall be kindled against this place and shall not be quenched. But to the king of Yehuda, who sent you to inquire of the Lord, thus shall you say to him, Thus says the Lord God of Yisrael, regarding the words which thou hast heard, because thy heart was tender, and thou hast humbled thyself before the Lord, when thou didst hear what I spoke against this place and against its inhabitants, that they should become a desolation and a curse, and has rent thy clothes and wept before me. I have also heard thee, says the Lord. Behold, therefore, I will gather thee unto thy fathers, and thou shalt be gathered into thy grave in peace, and thy eyes shall not see all the evil which I shall bring upon this place. So he took her answer back to the king. So and they brought back word to the king. So, so the, when the when the, the the Torah was found from the repair of the temple, the king hears the words from the Torah. He tears open his robes because he's sh these these shocked by these words. Is that our generations and not the people that have gone before have not been adhering to these words. Send somebody to this prophetess to to ask about these words. Yeah. Uh, she she describes she gives a description and these words come back. To. Now so what what I'm this narrative, and then in in chapter twenty three the chapter that follows we see all of those things that are happening the idols are destroyed the altars are destroyed to the false gods the house of the Sodomites are destroyed um, all of these things that happen. Yeah, and eventually now, they're taken into exile. Absolutely. Yes. So the the point the point here is is the king is why if the king is already aware of these words why seek verification upon hearing them. 
because he has interpreted it as a bad omen that these words have just been read to him. Have been read to him, and he thinks, ah, the reason it's being read to me now, the reason God has orchestrated that these words should be read to me now, um, is, is is because is because these words are going to come to pass very soon. He thinks. Chulda says, don't worry, reassuring him, and says. There, it is it, right. Obviously, the destruction is going to happen against his people, but not in your time. After your time, right? So it's not going to happen right away. It's going to happen after a while, right? You're going to go to grave in peace, right? Um, you're not going to see what happens later on. It'll happen because you were tender. Would that be the desolation of the uh, desolation so, of abomination? So. Sorry, what so what do you say yeah. of this conversation? Uh, spoken of by what Daniel. Proof what? 